Hi, Ep. So this is the video about interaction rules. So interaction rules are the way in which we create uh, well, interactivity between cues innovation. And really, this is the this is the kind of the essence of what ovation is and what it can do. Rather than create specifically designed cues to stop or fade or react in a specific way, each cue can be designed to react in any way you want it to, and in multiple ways, to different cues inside a cue list. Now, that's a bit of a vague reference, so instead what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll demonstrate with a couple of examples of what a, uh, interaction rules can do and when they're placed in a cue or a cue list in a show. Um, and from that, hopefully, what you can do is start to get some ideas as to what you might want to do uh, with interaction rules in your ovation show. One thing that can also be mentioned is if you if you want to design something complex or if you're working on interaction rules and 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 want to be better at them, uh, this is a perfect opportunity to to, to discuss uh, ovation rules on our forum, uh, which is forum.merging.com, or be able to, uh, you know, contact us at our at our website, www.merging.com, um, and really just talk about these things, because there there's no right or wrong way to, to creating interaction rules. Uh, it's only achieving what you want to achieve. So very, very simply, what we'll do is we'll start with one of the most basic interaction rules that's available. So I'm going to right click on a queue and I'm going to add a rule to this queue, number one, and it's going to be called fire the next queue when ending. Yeah? So I'm going to add that rule in. I'm going to say OK. And now when I fire this rule, bang, my next queue fires and we stop. Really, really simple, really easy. So I could also add a second rule. I can do more than one thing at a time. So I'm going to fire the next queue when ending but I'm also going to fire itself when ending. So what's going to happen is it's going to fire the next queue off once, but then loop around firing itself again and again and again. So I'm going to add that rule in again, and now press play, and there we go. And now it's firing the next queue every single time as well. Yeah? Oops. There we go. And then we stop. Beautiful. So you can start adding as many rules as you want for, for each one of these. So rules can be applied to the next queue. If we just look at the, the list here, they're going to be applied to next queue and all sort of previous queue, queues on the same, there's, there's, or, or any specific queue in any specific queue list. Um, we can also then start to use nesting. We have another queue list here, which has a parent queue and then three children. Now, in the parent, I've set up some markers, and on each marker, I've set up a, the same rule. And this rule says fire a child randomly when reaching the marker. So within this children group here, when the mark when it hits a marker, it's going to fire off uh, a piece of audio at random. So just have a look. So you can see here that it's got some random noises which are going to fire off. And, and this is a musical example. It's just a couple of sounds that go together, but y you can start to see that this could be potentially a background atmosphere, and these could be intermittent spot effects that you want to have happen throughout a scene that you want them to change and meld, but you're not, you don't want them to play in a specific order. Maybe you want them to you want them to play at random. So by doing this, every single time I play this, you'll see it. It'll do it differently. So you can start to see that that it, it with a bigger cue list, lots of children in this group, you can get a really interesting sense of of, of uh, randomizing uh, spot effect sounds or or other things in your in your show. So we've seen interaction rules assigned to uh, a specific cue. We've seen them assigned to markers within a cue. Um, we can also assign them to a more general uh, usage. In the queue list properties and in the show properties, we have the ability to set default interaction rules for each, with a with a uh, you know an understandable hierarchy to it. Within here, I've got hotkeys. Yeah, I've got four pieces of music set up, and if I play them all together, it makes a 
bunch of noise. Uh, in a in a hockey's cue list, in a broadcast scenario or in a in a scenario where you want random access to sounds, sometimes you want them to overlap, but sometimes you very much want them to never overlap. You want to have a general rule which says don't let more than one cue fire at the same time. So we can we can add these in very easily in cue list properties. We can say stop all the cues in the cue list when starting, and we can even give it a nice little fade out. So with a one second fade out, add the rule in. Okie dokie. And now I've got a cue list rule. You can see I've got a, uh, uh, an exclamation mark here that's colored like my cue list. Just like in the standard, I've got one colored like my cue properties to, to denote that there's rules applied. So now I can start this song. And then I can start this song. And I get a change. And I change that. And I can change all of them without having to worry about uh, overlaps are about assigning an individual rule to each queue uh, and how it needs to interact with the others in a list if I want it to be a generic. And the nice thing about the queue list rules is if I go and find some additional sounds uh, and you'll see that the rule is applied to them as well. Yep. So it's very easy to, to, to create a, uh, an, an area where you can drop information and it will act in a certain way because it's there. So the rules can be directly applied to a queue, a queue list, or a show, and they can act to, to make a queue do something if something else is occurring. Yeah. So the, here is where the, the, the rules get very interesting, because what I can also do is not necessarily create a direct connection, but create a conditional connection. So here what I've got is I've got a, a song, uh, just a piece of music. And within this music, what I've set up is I've set up some loop points. Now, the loop points are set so that when it reaches marker four, there's some things that happen in here. And I'm going to pop this open and have a look at what I've got set up so far. So I'm just going to move that along. So I'll remake it for you right now. So it says fire itself at marker one when reaching the marker, when reaching marker four, but only if another cue is fired. So what I'm doing is I'm essentially making an enable button. If I fire a long loop, it will loop from marker four back to marker one. Likewise, if I've got the medium loop fired, it'll loop back to marker two. And what I'm gonna do is make this third one where I want a short loop, so fire itself when reaching the marker back to the marker three, whoops, not 34, <laughs> three, when reaching uh, the marker only if the short loop is fired. So now I've got three different possibilities dependent on three other cues being fired. So let's see how that works. So I'll play this. So you can see here that it's actually really, really, really easy to create as many looping points as you want within a project uh, and make them dependent on anything else happening. The beautiful thing about it being dependent on other cues is these can be obviously manually fired, but they can also be fired by uh, incoming control protocol. So this could be a a MIDI note on from a drummer, uh, which would loop uh, the chorus area of uh, a song that's being played live on stage. The backing tracks then just follow along and the drummer is in complete control of what's going on. Um, or musical theater, uh, you know, if you have an actor that, that needs a, a little bit more time in a, in a verse area to be able to finish a, a bit of a monologue, then you can, you can have all of this set up very, very simply and easily and make them conditional on, on the response to, to firing commands. So again, this is this is just the, the the sort of tip of the iceberg, so to speak, when it comes to interaction rules. But it gives you a broad overview of the fact that they can be assigned to markers, they can be assigned in the queues, they can be assigned to a queue list, or they can be assigned to an entire show uh, with a variety of hierarchy. Again, as we saw uh, as a last point in uh, the queue properties video, uh, there's a very special marker here: ignore parent rules. So if I've got a queue list rule. 
as I do in here, and there's one queue within it, which I do not want to associate with the queue list, I can say ignore parent rules. And there you go. It will not listen to what's happening as part of the hierarchy. So it's quite handy to be able to isolate them sometimes. Other than that, all I can say is have a good play with interaction rules. Uh, it's no end to the amount of creativity it'll add to your show. Thank you.